True transformation cannot happen without a renewal of the mind. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mind over matter. If the pain of where you are never exceeds the pain of change, you will always remain the same through a renewal of the mind. And it takes a process. True transformation. Mind, mind, mind over matter. Change your mind, you change your life. Change your life. You gotta go through it to grow through it. Mind over matter. Be clear. Welcome back to the Mind Over Matter podcast. We are back. I am Ken Kenyon. Yo, and I'm Coach Lynch. I just want to know why the heck you got to sound like Howard Cosell when we come on the joint, man. <laughs> hey, man, you know, hey, man why you can't just be King Kenyon and <laughs> talk about the podcast? You know it's smooth, though. You know yeah, it's, it's smooth. not smooth. I really want to do another take, but you know, tell the people we got special guests today, We're here. Man. First of all, I got special tea. A.K.A. Taylor. <laughs> yeah, you got a nickname. Like a, some cereal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, What's up, man. everybody? <laughs> and we do have a guest today. Another guest. Y'all know we try to bring guests on the show. But today we have a very special guest. That's right. We got my lovely daughter, Khadijah, here. Hey, say what's hey up to everyone. the people. Hey, Look at that sweet hey, everyone. <laughs> I mean, she sounded all sweet. We know. She <laughs> sounds <laughs> sweet. She just snapped in a just minute. She sounds sweet. That's about it. Uh, all right. All right. All right, we're going to get back at it. Oh, by the way, so here's what we want y'all to do. Y'all go to our YouTube page, and what we want you to do is subscribe. Yes. People are loving the podcast, mm-hmm. and it makes us feel good mm-hmm. because the subscriber numbers go up, obviously, in this world. People are like, show me. So the more people who subscribe, the more we can show advertisers that, hey, we're growing. Because right. we want to take this to the world. Yeah, right? plus we're giving some great content, man. Everybody's coming up to us and they're saying how much they like the podcast. And then we're like, hey, did you subscribe? They're like, uh, come right. on, man. <laughs> results TV with a Z. Results with a Z. Huh? SoundCloud, iTunes, and yep. uh, YouTube. And All right. Uh, What's today's topic, Ken? So let's get into it. Ah. Now, I got to get into it because um, you came up with something real, real good. Mm-hmm. Real good. I call you Pastor L now. Hey, man. I mean, know. the dude, the dude <clears throat> come from the streets to the hey, pool, man. Yeah. You know, they you try know to fit me. They try to fit me from the yeah. yeah. You, you know why? You, let me tell you why I pinched my throat because when he said Pastor L, I was just uh, right now, like, they just fitted me for my collar. So, you know, right now, I was just feeling <laughs> how it's going to feel. Your clergy yeah, collar. My, my clergy collar. So, okay. I'm feeling my throat right now, like, you know, when that joint go around there, it'll be official. You feel me? Nah, I'm just playing, man. Nah, man, but, but you, know. you did you did something on the, on the prayer call uh, this morning, mm-hmm. and uh, the topic was just dope. It was yeah. dope. I was like, yo. We got to bring it to the people. Take it to the people. Take it to the people. So the name of this topic, um, this podcast is mm-hmm. Life is an Oxymoron. That's good. And some people are out there thinking, mm-hmm. what the heck is an oxymoron? Word. So before we get into it, I want to give y'all the definition before Pastor Lynch gets into his sermon. Uh, but real talk, I'm going to give you the, de- the definition of it. And I'm going to give you some examples of an oxymoron. Don't be ashamed to call his name. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, Lord. Come on. <laughs> okay. Amen. All right, then. Be careful, y'all got this. All right. So the oxymoron says a combination of contradictory or incongruous words. Incongruous words. Like, to give you an example, things like cruel kindness. Or let me give you another thing. The Great Depression is an oxymoron. Or how about this right here? Big baby. Like, big baby. Because big is big. Baby is small. Things that seem incongruent. But people put them together, all right? And so having said that, oh, like, you know, do you ever watch the show The Walking Dead? Well, I, I don't watch it. You don't watch The Walking Dead? No, I don't watch the one the, TV show, the and Walking that's The Dead. Walking Dead. You see what I'm saying? I guess. That's <laughs> and, but that's an oxymoron. Walking Dead, because the dead don't walk. You I feel can, me? Yeah, I can do all that. All right, all right. I, I did that. Right, go right. into your thing, man. Give it to it. All right, cool. I mean, listen, uh, yesterday I was given the revelation that you know, life is an oxymoron, the straight title that we got to this joint right here. So, you know, it led me to a scripture, and, and I'm going to read from it today real quick because, uh, 
this is what I did on, on the prayer call. And, and it, you know, I just got a lot of, I got a lot of people responding from it. They just said it was dope. So I, I just want to go to the scripture. So uh, real quick. And it said, <clears throat> this is Romans 7 verses 14 through 20 in the message Bible. And it simply says, what I don't understand about myself is that I decide one way, but then I act another mm. doing things I absolutely despise. So if I can't be trusted to figure out what is best for myself and then do it, it becomes obvious that God's command is necessary. But I need something more. For if I know the law but still can't keep it, and if the power of sin within me keeps sabotaging my best intentions, I obviously need help. I realize that I don't have what it takes. I can will it, but I can't do it. I decide to do good, but I don't really do it. I decide not to do bad, but then I do it anyway. My decisions, such as they are, don't result in actions. Something has gone wrong deep within me and gets the better of me every time. Wow. So today we're going to use for a title, Life is an Oxymoron. Okay. So check this out. I'm going to tell you where it came to me. Like I was training um, Pastor Brisbane and his wife, Crystal, and... Uh, Caps was 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 on the treadmill. Uh, <laughs> Caps was on the treadmill <laughs> next to Chris. Yo, shout out to Caps, man. man Listen, Caps. If y'all looking for that urban wear, go check my man out, man. Shout out to Caps, but Caps been rocking with me since the garage, man. You know what I'm saying? I know. And uh, you know, uh, Caps like, the one told me about you. And that and that's what I'm saying, man. And and, and you know, uh, it, it was kind of like the kind of revelation that I had with, uh, with 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 Pastor Clark when I gave the speech about um him uh, a couple weeks ago and. I was just looking, and and then it came to me, and I was like, uh, you know, what I don't like makes me happy, and what I actually like doesn't make me happy. Mm. I'm going to say that again. Okay, say that one more time. The things that I like don't make me happy, wow. and the things I actually like don't make me happy. So the things that I like don't make me happy, and the things that I actually like or don't like make me happy. Is that what I said? Yeah. Things that you like. The things the, that I like don't, don't make, make me happy, happy, and the things that I don't, don't like, like make me happy. Wow. Yeah. Good. Got it. I mean, it's so deep. that Yeah, it's going to confuse me. <laughs> Does that make sense? But yeah, once you start breaking, you break it down, it ain't going to confuse them. All right, so what I did was I looked back on my life. And I said, this principle rings true in my whole entire life. So look, this is what I did. I said I was in high school and I didn't like to study. All right? right? Pay attention. I didn't like to study, but I studied anyway. I got good grades. When I got good grades, I got scholarship to go to school. When I got a scholarship to go to college, I actually played sports in college and that made me happy. Right. I didn't like to study. But ultimately, it led me to play sports in college, which made me happy. Right. All right. Now, I got to college, and I liked the freedom that I had. I liked the fact that Mom Dukes wasn't over me talking about, you got to go to class. You got to wake up for class. And you know what else I liked? I liked sleeping in. Mm. So, guess what? I started to sleep in, and when I sleep in, I missed class, and then when I missed class, I started to fail, and when I failed class, I started to drop the classes, and when I dropped the classes, guess what I did? I was, listen, I, I didn't have enough classes to be considered a full-time student. And when I wasn't a full-time student anymore, they denied me housing. Yeah. And when they denied me housing, I didn't go to school in the town that I lived, so I had to move back home. So the things that I like to do made me unhappy when I flunked mm. out of school. Wow. Does that make sense? Yes. Wow. So, so the things I like I'm to do... I'm not done. To, uh, I got to come up into now, because when I flunked out of school, yeah. I started to do a lot of more things that I like to do because remember I played college football and college basketball and I still had the insatiable appetite like an athlete but I was no longer playing sports and I like to eat. So I continued to eat the things that I liked and when I wanted and how much of it that I wanted and I gained 85 pounds which made me unhappy. Because you liked that physical activity that you were doing when you were in school. Mm -hmm. And I still like to eat. Right, 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 right. So I like to eat, which ultimately made me unhappy. Yeah. Right? right. Now, I, I'm not done. Okay. I'm not done. So one day I had to tell myself that this is not me. This is not who I was meant to be. And this is not how you'll remember me. 
So from that day forward, I started to do the things that I did not like. Right. I started to eat healthy and I didn't like it. In fact, I hated it. I started to exercise. I did not like it. At 285 pounds, I simply hated it. I started to run. I thought I had asthma. I didn't like it. I actually hated it. But guess what? I started to lose weight and I liked it. Mm. Right? Okay. I liked it so much so that I kept doing the things that I didn't like and I lost 70 pounds in six months, which made me happy. Super happy. Right? Mm. Okay. I, I, I need you to understand where I'm going with this because the things that I like don't make me happy and the things that I don't like make me happy. I, I need you to understand this. Right. Are you following me? Okay. Okay, so now, uh, it, here I am and I've lost this weight and I, I never liked to study once I got to college because all I did was party and BS. I can't curse, <laughs> I but it was, it, was <laughs> it was coming. But since I fell in love with the process after I lost all the weight, I went back to doing more things that I didn't like and I wanted to study again. Mm. So I started to study it. I learned all these certifications. I got all these certifications and I learned this process and I figured that I could help some other people who weren't happy. Mm. Right? And this wow. brought me to a place where wow. like, we're all sitting down at this table together because I like to do things and they made me unhappy. And then I started doing things that I don't like, which made me happy. And it brought me to the place where we are now, where we all can be happy when we talk about this stuff. So let's go on a little bit now. Man. You guys got the backstory. And you understand what an oxymoron is, right? You understand it? Man, I passed the plate. Oh, man. Pass the plate. Come on, man. man. I got a plate full of, uh, I got a, with a quinoa chips. Put some more quinoa chips in it. <laughs> pass the plate. Oh, my goodness. Yo, yo, straight up. That's powerful. That's straight up powerful. So let, let's dig into this. Let's man. dig into it. I because there are some people out there who are doing things that make them happy in the present. Okay, that make them right, happy. Right. Okay. I mean, or, or, or they, they like just it. like to do it. They like to they do like it. They like to do it. Doesn't make them happy. No. They like to do it's, it. It satisfies them emotionally in the moment. Right. In the moment. Because they like to do that. But it doesn't ultimately bring emotional fulfillment. Right. Happiness. Happiness. Because happiness, happiness is, is true emotional, emotional fulfillment. fulfillment. That's right. Good. Good. So, good. So what we're doing is things we like to do in the moment. Right. But it doesn't ultimately bring us emotional fulfillment. Without question, I like pizza, Ken. I like cookies, Ken. I like cake, Ken. And a cheese steak. I like the chicken own. cheese steak the size of you know, Philly cheese steaks. We eat chicken cheese steaks and Philly cheese steaks. They're so big and huge, and I eat all of them in one setting. But if I do that every weekend, I gain 10 pounds, and it makes me unhappy. Yes, that's good. So the flip side of that. The flip side of it, Ken, is I hate. And I do not like eating asparagus every day. I do not like eating boiled eggs every day. I do not like eating plain oatmeal every day. I do not like eating baked chicken every day. I do not like waking up at 3 a.m. every day. I do not like exercising six days a week. But when I look in the mirror, it makes me happy. happy. Emotionally fulfilled. It makes you emotionally fulfilled. When you look in the mirror and you see the results of your work. Six pack. Wow. Biceps bulging. Right now, every time we shoot a video and I'm sitting in a chair and I got my arms folded, I can see my vein coming down my bicep and, and that, that makes, makes me happy. happy. <laughs> I want to roll. Uh, you want to roll right now. Butter, baby. Right. Butter on the roll. Now, so what we want to do, because when you, when, we, when you first said it, I thought this was awesome. Hey, look, he said butter. Right? Hold right? on. Hold on. Ken's cut. so slow, though. Said, Ken's so slow. How long, long, long it took him to realize it was butter on a roll? Jeez, I'm trying to feed the people some of this food. <laughs> My subconscious mind said butter, butter on a roll. <laughs> he hung me. Hung me. You saw that He went back to the biggest Yo. loser. 400 <laughs> Ken. He, he like the things I like. I saw that. <laughs> He's like, I like 
Bug all the road. He tried to block it out. <laughs> I tried to block it out. Biggest but, loser. But now that, so I'm gonna start with me. Go ahead, Ken. The things that in my life that I've liked to do. Mm-hmm. And I've done them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That has made me well, ultimately. I, I, I know you're probably going to get to this, but I just want to say it real quick. When we actually talked about it earlier, you were on the treadmill and you were running something that you don't like to do. Right. And today you ran a mile, something you have not done in a long period of time. But I, mean, I ran it at a certain speed. Right, but you <laughs> ran it. But did you run it? No, I ran it at a speed. You run it and it was on the treadmill. Every day when you come in, I tell you, Ken, you got a mile. Where do you go? You go to the elliptical, the elliptical. because you like the elliptical. I, I, I you yeah. don't like the, the treadmill. Tread, I don't like it. Right? <laughs> I don't. But I love, but what it gave me most of yes. the feeling made me happy yes. after I was finished. Right. And I had accomplished something. That's what I'm talking and about. And I had accomplished something That's what I'm talking that about. it's been a while and what I did just now people can say what they want to, but for for me, I hate running so much mm-hmm. that I told myself, so I said today, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put it on between five and five point five miles per hour. And for me, that's just blazing. Yeah, yeah. That's like, <laughs> the, that's like, that's like that's 9.0. That's like blazing. <laughs> like for the average person, you know, that you. might be not like much, but to me, yeah. 5.5 yeah. a mile, that's blazing. Yeah. Yeah. My heart pounding like, yeah. but, but I didn't like to do it. And so when you came up, when I saw the board, what we had to do, yeah. I said, no, nah, I'm going to run this. Yeah. I don't. I hadn't heard your sermon. Yeah, I know. I know. But I said I don't. I don't like to do this. Right. But I know how I'm gonna feel at yeah. the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm willing to endure mm-hmm. what it is I had to endure mm-hmm. yeah. because the emotional satisfaction that we get, all those endorphins that are released, that created momentum in me to yes. know that I could do more. That's good. To want to do more, even though I didn't like what I did. Is it safe to say if we like it, if we don't like it, then we need it? A lot of times. Mm -hmm. A lot of times. A lot of times we need it. Yeah. It's just like leg day. I'll give you, we we talk about working out because it's obvious in working out. Yeah. Yeah. It's very obvious because a lot of times we masquerade the things we don't like because we do it at home away from everybody else. True, true, true. You see, in the gym, I can easily identify what it is because on leg day, I instantly don't like it because so I used to Mondays go to the other gym. I'm not going to mention their name. All right, the other gym. And then so Liz says, you don't, I said, man, I got got had knee surgery and all this, but really it's because you don't like it, right? Right. But I was forced to deal with the fact that I really just didn't like it. Yeah, I had other issues, but we could work around those other issues. Mm-hmm. So, but I realized after coming now, I like coming because I feel emotionally fulfilled every time we come. I mean, I don't like doing the workout, but the workout is so hard that at the end, when I walk out that door, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm emotionally fulfilled. Yeah. 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 So, wow. Good. So I'm willing to endure that's that. That's that's deep right there. Yeah. yeah. That's deep. Well, right can there. I ask you a question? Yes. Um, when the way you feel now after accomplishing leg day, mm-hmm. do you actually fit, did you feel that kind of emotional fulfillment when you used to do leg day on your own? Absolutely not. Good. That's I good. just told myself to lie. Yeah, yeah. What I did was I lied to myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what it is, we do that, a lot of people do that to yeah. themselves. They lie oh, yeah. and say, I did the I did. alternative right. yeah. to make myself feel better about not doing the other thing I should be Without doing. question. Okay? Without so question. it wasn't until you forced me. Oh, yeah. What am I going to say? Forced me. You. you confronted me about yeah. it. And then even though I didn't like I kept the say, I kept saying no matter how much you would tell me that you did legs, I kept telling you that you missed leg day. Right. I miss leg day. You miss leg day. Yeah, I miss you, leg day. I would say, Ken, how many days you come this week? You would be like, I did five days. I said, no, how many days did you come this week? And we would go back and forth. I was like, well, if you didn't do it here, it don't count. It don't count. Straight up. I didn't see it. I ain't go sign it. None of that. You know what I realized, though? And this is deep right here. What I realized was it wasn't coming to the gym that he wanted. Right. What he wanted was... It's the challenge of pushing me beyond right. my comfort zone. Right. Yeah. It's what he wanted. Right. Because he knew if I was by myself, I wasn't going to do that. 
Right. So I don't trust the average person with pushing them. I'm not saying you're average. No, no, no. I get what you're I'm saying. I'm just saying that I don't trust the average person with pushing themselves outside of their comfort zone. Especially in this area right. Right. of my life. That's a, that has been a struggle. Right. You know, somebody, if you got a struggle in your life, how can somebody expect you you to push yourself? Like we say, we always say everybody needs a coach. And everybody in certain areas of our life, we need somebody to push us. Yeah. If that area is the area that you're weak in, how can you expect somebody to push you in that area? True. It just ain't going to happen. Right. Um, so that being the case, man, that's good. Taylor, all right. <laughs> All right, Taylor, let's talk about you. So now you understand the concept he said, which is power. The things that we like to do ultimately don't make us happy, don't bring us um, emotional fulfillment. The things that we don't like to do, that we don't like to do, ultimately bring us emotional fulfillment, bring us happiness. Yes, yes, yes. So in your life, something recent happened. Tell the people. <laughs> this is like real recent. Like, like real recent. I'm a snitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you waited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, All right. Well, this morning, <laughs> very recent. I um, we were doing a circuit, but we had did a bunch of stuff before that too, didn't we? Yeah, you ran a mile and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, and we were doing a circuit, and so um, finally got around to the boxes. And I low-key just conquered the 24-inch box, but today it defeated me because the 24-inch box went from a rectangular shape to a square. So in my mind, when I walked up to it, I was like, I'm not going to make that. That's not going to work. I think so it was the other way around. I think it went from a big square to a rectangle. To a rectangle. Yeah. To a smaller oh, okay, ladder. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To yeah. a smaller ladder. Yes. Okay, I agree. She done got so confused from that box. Yeah, it's all good. But to me, it went she like traumatized. this. Okay, whatever. It went from a square to a rectangle. <laughs> to a rectangle. Because I was watching. Right. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. But either way, it, it definitely defeated me today. Um, yeah. It scared the living daylights out of me. Because I just knew I was going to fall. And then I fell twice. And then even the second time, I was like, okay, we're going to do this. And I did it. But then the third round came around, and I, I was like, oh. There was I'm one not, whole not round where we had, we, all the rounds, we had 30 seconds yeah. of work to do. One whole round, she just she did absolutely she nothing. She just stood yeah. there. She stood there. there like she was about to jump off a building and just, yeah. and just literally, how I looked literally at it. couldn't move. Like she was That's afraid of heights. Yeah, I looked at it. Listen, absolutes, Ken, absolutes. Wow. 24 inches is 24 inches. She's jumped on 24 inches countless, countless numbers of times. Many, many, many times. So all of a sudden, you know, you did take, you, you took a leap where you moved from one class to another. And yes, my class is harder in this aspect because of the simple fact that I just push you a little bit more. Right. All right. So all I did was move the box from that side of the room to this side of the room because you used to jump on a 24 inch box on the other side of the room. Against the wall. Right. Right. But right. what? makes this 24 inch any different than the 24 inch against the wall now we that we talk about it nothing nothing no. but in that moment well, y'all, this, this, this is why i like this podcast because this is this is organic right here yeah but there is something different okay her environment changed <laughs> what happens to people y'all when you take them out of an environment a lot of times where they have been dominant. You know, it's just like when you go from high school to college. Mm-hmm. You know, they've been the leader, good on their football team. When you go to college, everybody's good. But see, in football, there's different dynamics. So the speed of the game changes. The players change. The talent level increases. In this aspect, all we did was move the same absolute 24 inches on the other side of the room. That's all we did. You don't think her... It was um, the same room. Do you it was think, the same box. Do you think the workout is more intense that, that screwed her mind up? Yes. Okay. Yes. I believe that she's telling herself that this workout is harder than the other workout. So 24 inches became harder. Wow. Yeah, I think so too. But it's the same 24 inches. Right. Right. So people do that all the time. Right. That, I mean, you, you got to understand is your perspective is the way you feel about what you see dictates your reality. Mm-hmm. And, since, and all all we did was she had a different box which had a smaller platform, but she was barely making it on the platform. So the part that she was secure with that wasn't there, she wasn't going to land on anyway because mm-hmm. she was barely getting on the box. 
So if she had the other two inches to land on, then it wouldn't like she was going to get in the middle of the box or towards the other side of the box. She was barely getting on this side of the box, which is all she needed to get on. Right, right, right. That's deep. Huh, that's deep. So so now, using this whole thing, things that I don't like to do to be, bring me ultimately uh, fulfillment, going back to our thing, our, our, our whole premise. Mm -hmm. When you stood there and didn't do anything, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. the fact that that behavior led to unhappiness. Because at the end, what you told me on the way home, you was like, you know what? I just got defeated today. You know, that didn't make me happy. That it just didn't make me happy. Mm -hmm. So in that, in the case, like in a case like that, somebody's listening to this. Mm -hmm. What can Taylor do? I'm gonna ask Taylor this question, not you or not me. What can you do, Taylor, to even though you don't like it? do things that you can do to make you ultimately happy next go around i gotta try or no i was told earlier not to try just do it so i gotta just do it i gotta stop thinking about stop it. stop thinking mm -hmm. yeah you gotta stop thinking mm -hmm. thinking is the hardest exercise because yeah. it stifles you mm -hmm. stop thinking yeah you know because i saw you over there contemplating but, the, 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 but she has to make that click she she has to marry that with the intention, but the behavior with the intention. But Lebanese Mike was right next to her. And he told her, stop thinking. He was saying, yeah, just yeah. jump. I heard him every single time he said it to her. And she still stood there like it was a gun to her face and she wasn't allowed to move anywhere else. He was going to blow her head off. Well, Boom. I know that feeling, though, because remember the first day I got on the box? The first day and I was trying to see. <laughs> I know you laughing. Taylor wasn't here to see that. Deej, my first day, and we gotta let Deej get in here. Yeah. Deej, I only, I'll tell you on my first day. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's uh, go Deej, ahead, Deej. What Deej, you like, like, so the question is, you can take it either way. There's an oxymoron in your life, and we just want right. You to just yeah, give well, us either way, some something you like that that meant, led to uh, non fulfillment, mm -hmm. or something you didn't like that you did mm -hmm. that led to fulfillment, emotional fulfillment, happiness. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'll take the other route, and I'll um, I like to watch TV. A lot okay. of TV. Okay. okay. Um, it makes me happy at the time, but it doesn't make me happy later on because I'll either watch TV right before it's time for me to go to bed because I do set myself a bedtime so I can get up at a reasonable time, even if I plan on going to the gym in the morning. But sometimes that TV show, it may prolong and go over my bedtime. Mm -hmm. So, and everyone knows that watching TV is not productive, it's, especially when you know that you have goals yeah. especially when you know that you have things to do i can be writing out my goals writing strategic things to reach my goals or i can be doing other things as far as washing clothes and doing something more productive other than watching tv so it's like when i'm watching tv and especially it depends on what i'm watching at the time so if i'm watching a reality um tv show sometimes stuff that i'm dealing with in my personal life i'll allow that to dictate how i'm going to handle what I'm wow. what that's, good. That's, good. That's, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. And, but really it's good. that's good. Right. What I said, but it's not good though. Right, 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 right. right, 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 right. right. Just right. to clear up for the people. Right. So to clear up for the people, <laughs> Deej understands that television programs your subconscious and it conditions you to respond to things in a certain way. So she's saying that if she's going through something in her life and she's continuously watching these programs, that these people may not be responding in the right manner. She may respond to a situation in her life in a way that she probably wouldn't normally respond if she wasn't programmed in that manner doing something that she liked and now she gets an outcome that makes her unhappy because she responded in a way that didn't call for so uh, that that is that's really good that's, that's that's really good really good and it's good that you acknowledge it See, yeah. that's, that, that's the part that we were saying is good yeah that's know? that's the part I, I like about the fact that I'm doing something that I like but it doesn't make me happy but I know that I'm getting closer to ceasing that bad habit because recognition of the bad habit that's a that's first a, a yes, great step right, yes. yeah. but then you can recognize it but you also have to take action in either ceasing or continuing it right 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 and that's and, and i'm glad you made that point because that's what we did the last two weeks with the people right. in the podcast and the group because we recognized, we said, hey, what do you need to kill? Something had to die in order for something to live. So we recognized what we had to kill. Then we 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 did. We did the call to action and we took action on it, right? right. And now we're sitting here talking about oxymorons. <laughs> mm. This is some good stuff. We were tying all the way in. So here's what we want to do. Let's give these people three points. Okay. All right, three points, things that they can do. 
Because at the end of the day, y'all, we're not all about just just spitting out. So we want to give you something that you can use today and tomorrow. Um, so I got three points uh, about these oxymorons. The first one here, it says this. I'll give you the first one says, don't let the things you like to do ruin you. Mm, that's good. The things you like to do, don't let them ruin you. Yeah. Because you know what will happen is people like to smoke cigarettes. They'll yeah. like to smoke cigarettes yeah. until they get lung cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? You like them. You say, oh, that calms me down, calms my nerves down. Mm -hmm. But the reality is these are the stories. we. This is the lie we tell ourselves. Right. right. The reality is we all tell ourselves a story. We all have a story we tell ourselves. I told myself I wasn't coming to the gym on Monday. I'm going to just go to that other gym. Yeah, 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 Later, yeah. I don't had knee surgery. Yeah. I don't have, but that's the lie that I, I could live with. Yeah. It was the story I could live with. Mm -hmm. How many people are telling themselves a story and that very story is leading to that same behavior that you like that's ultimately going to ruin you? That's good. Okay. That's ultimately going to ruin you. Right, so now. don't let the things you like to do ruin you. Good. Wow. That's your advice right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you all right? I'm good. <laughs> good. Can you get the people next people point, please? They don't know you like that. Get the people next point. Go ahead. Point two. Yeah. Push ourselves to do the things that make us ultimately happy. Push yourself. Mm -hmm. In other words, I can say push yourself through the pain. Mm -hmm. Push yourself through the discomfort. Push yourself out of your comfort zone. Push yourself through the things that challenge you. The key word is push. push. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. push. I right. heard you. I heard you say that uh, before. Um, you you say I'm, I'm gonna push you through the the comfort zone. I'm gonna push you through the level of where you used to going. Mm -hmm. And the reason why. We don't like that is because it's so uncomfortable in the area of the area, especially when you push us to an area right. that's uncomfortable. Right. Every, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say something real deep, y'all. Mm. God gave me this revelation. and I'm not, not, not that, you know, I speak to, I try to speak to him every day. He don't speak to me every day. Mm. But he gave me a revelation one day that was so powerful. He said, Ken, anything that I've got for you lies outside your comfort zone. Mm. And, and it's designed that way because you got to push yourself and to have the faith to get it. Yeah. You got to have the faith to get it, y'all. That's, That's like you, Deej, where you are in your life, college graduate. There's some things that, that, your, that your destiny is tied to, your purpose is tied to, but it's going to happen outside your comfort zone. You're going to have to get uncomfortable to get it. Taylor's uncomfortable working with us because she came straight out of college all these degrees, magna cum laude, summa cum laude, duma cum laude. I don't yeah. care what. She had more cords. She had more cords than, than shoe strings. Uh -huh. All right. But she decided to work with me and you, yeah, Lynch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Decided outside her comfort zone. Praise the Lord. You. Outside your comfort zone. <laughs> you. you get up at 3 o'clock every morning. Yeah. Yeah. Every morning. You feed into the lives of the people that come there Ooh. when you're tired. tired. You, you, what you do is you record the podcast Ooh. when you should be really eating and going to sleep. Yeah, I did eight, eight speeches today. Eight speeches outside your comfort zone. And a podcast. Woo. You don't, things you don't like to do, yeah. but ultimately it's going to make you happy when your name becomes a household name beyond Greensboro, right. beyond these states. Ooh, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's all of these things are uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? That's it's good. uncomfortable, but what happens is it's going to make us happy in the end. Right. I'm, I'm trying to preach you, preach your other side. Nah, you doing good. But I but that's that, that's I'm real. Listening. I'm that's getting real. fed now. I'm that, getting that, fed. That, so so the second thing is push yourselves outside your comfort zone mm -hmm. and do the things you don't like to do to ultimately be happy. Mm -hmm. And the last thing, the last thing, number three is this. This is just, just pure, pure power. Successful people do what unsuccessful people are unwilling to do. That's right. Notice I said the word do. Do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do. Mm -hmm. Not think. Mm -hmm. Not Because th you said something so powerful. Let you said, and, and, I, and I just mentioned when you said it this morning. And so I don't want to steal it. I want to give you credit for it. But you said thinking is the hardest exercise. Hardest exercise. 
And I thought about that. Because I asked her, I said, how many calories you burn on that set right there? Because you damn sure ain't do nothing. I said, you ain't did nothing. All you did was think. I said, that was super hard. Wasn't it? I mean, super she sat there and just, just looked at the box. I said, you were studying for an exam or something? Boy, all because, that thinking. Because what does thinking do, though? What does thinking do? What thinking does is, thinking does is, it makes you, it creates inaction. Right, right. It creates inaction. Right. So what happens, the reason why it's the hardest exercise is because what happens in your mind, that's where the wars happen. Yeah. It's like we're warring back and forth, yeah. back and forth, back and forth. Can y'all attest to that? I can, yeah. I mean, how many times have you warred in your mind and the thinking becomes very difficult? It's hard. A warring mind, that's a dangerous place to be. Yeah. Yes. It is. You, you ever war in your mind? Oh, yeah. Do. Every, every, all the time. I get, every yeah. second. Yeah. How do you how do you determine who wins? Because there's two people talking. Uh, yeah, the, the, it's the enemy, which is always enemy. Right, 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 right. 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 All everything ties in together. Yeah, but the the righteous man always got to win. Right. The righteous man got he got to prevail. Does the righteous man always prevail? Uh, righteous woman always <laughs> prevailing? You, Taylor? Not always. Sometimes, like you gotta be real. Sometimes the unrighteous one will definitely win. Yeah, <laughs> but. Yeah. Uh, most times, the right. But that's the key. You yeah. just said it. That's what I was getting to. Most, most times. times. Yeah. You don't have to win 100% of your games. You just got to win most of them yeah. to get to the playoffs and get to the championship. Right? So, that's, so the last thing is successful people do what unsuccessful people are unwilling to do. Hey, Pastor Lynch, you want to leave him with something, man? Since you, 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 threw this, you laid this sermon down. So, you want to leave him with something. Today, I just want, or whenever they listen to this podcast, right, I right, just right. want the people to pay close attention to how they feel about everything they indulge in. Everything that you indulge in, I want you to pay close attention to it. And I want you to think, um, do, do I like this? Mm. Or do I don't like this? And based on what you heard today, you'll understand if it's getting you closer to emotional fulfillment or not based on how you feel about it. So just pay close attention to it and don't trade off your now for never. Uh, <laughs> we just cut it off right there. <laughs> just, we can just cut it off right there. It's over with. Do it, say, that one, say that one more time. I said don't trade off your now for never. Wow. That's, That's powerful. That's powerful right there. That's not saying for me. Taylor? I think Deej wants to say something to finish it off. Hold on. Taylor, <laughs> you say, and we're going to let Deej no, take us out. let Deej go. Deej, take, Deej us out. take us out. You I got mean, something to say? No, I did want to go back to point two when you were talking about the comfort zone and having to, and willing to be uncomfortable. Because yeah, let's go back when to you're, When you're in your uncomfortable phase, you have to be stretched. And when you're stretched, you're growing. So That's good. Yeah. That's good. Do you so like just tell, so she's telling the people to will be willing to be stretched. Right? Be willing to be stressed. Do you do you like to be stressed? Most times I don't like to be stressed, but I know that it's good for me though. So there we go again with the the oxymoron. That's it. Yeah. I don't like it, but I know that it's good for me. So that causes you to do it to right. be stressed. That's good stuff. Wow. And that's coming from a young person, y'all. And see, that's what I love about this podcast. We got all ages of people listening to it. I mean, gleaning from it, getting fed, because we must be doing something right. I just want to say, all of y'all, keep listening. Tell your friends about it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Results with a Z TV. <laughs> all right. Results, Results with a Z, with a Z. TV. <laughs> nah, that's good stuff. All right. It's mind over matter, y'all. Look, if you don't mind doing the things you don't like to do, then it won't matter because it will change you. All right, we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Mind, mind, mind over matter. Change your mind, you change your life. Change your life. You got to go through it to grow through it. Mind over matter. Be clear.